The best way to improve functional flexibility is to lift weights. All right. Let's talk about this a little bit. All right. Well, let's define uh, functional flexibility and how is it mm. different than regular flexibility. Haven't heard that term in a while. Yeah. the buzz so, term of yes, the day. It, so there's, there's a myth out there that resistance training makes you tight. Um, you lose mobility, right? The, the myth of the stiff, you know, tight bodybuilder who's got really bad flexibility. So, I, you know, what you said, Adam, is I think is important. We have to define functional flexibility. So regular flexibility is your ability to move through or, or, or be moved through a wide range of motion. So if I'm on the floor, let's say, and let's say Justin grabs my leg and tests my hamstring flexibility, passively he would bring my leg up and bring it you know, far back or whatever, and that would be my, my flexibility. Oh, yeah. Functional flexibility is different. Functional flexibility is you, flexibility you control it through that, that you own. Yeah. Flexibility that you have strength through. So uh, I like to use this example, right? I have a, a 15-month-old son. He's extremely flexible. I mean, I could bring his feet and put them by his head and twist them and do all kinds of – but he's got almost no functional flexibility, right? Because he has no strength. Yeah. Flexibility without control and strength is instability. It's actually one of the, the highest risks of injury is being hyper-flexible but also being weak. Now, proper mm. resistance training – and I say proper because this is the important thing to understand – Tra you train in a very full range of motion, and the goal is to increase your ranges of motion through proper mobility training and proper application of exercise. But when you train in those full ranges of motion, you improve your flexibility, but you're stronger in it. So not only can you know you sit in a squat, but you can do it with weight, and you can get out of it if you need to very quickly versus just being flexible without strength, which is totally unstable and, a, again, yeah. a recipe for, for injury. The best example of this that... I have ever seen in myself that like blew my mind was one of the first times that we <coughs> hung out with Dr. Brink and uh, he told me to sit down in a 90, 90 position, which you guys have seen me probably do on the YouTube channel a, a bunch of times. And uh, he grabbed my back leg and he took it and he lifted it like yeah, rot like, like internally rotated yeah. and brought your foot up too. Yeah, took almost my, to hit your butt. Did the same yeah, thing to me. Yeah, all the way. Like I was uh, looking at it. So I'm, I'm I'm sitting here in the ninety ninety position. He brings my heel up and I'm looking at my foot, going like, "Holy shit! I did not know that I have that much flexibility." And then he lets it go and he's okay. Now bring it back up to yourself. And I, it's like I, you yeah. know, like a half an inch. I could bring it off the ground. and That was it. So that and was it, flexibility versus what you right. actually own. Right, right. So and it just kind of blew my mind that I technically have that flexibility, mm -hmm. but I've lost all the control and strength. It's not usable in that in that range of motion. And that's I was like, wow. And there's an examples of that with every joint, right? Yeah. Everybody has that. But that was the the greatest expression that I'd ever seen someone or had someone show to me how much I was lacking in that area. He did, he did the same thing to me. And it was strange because I, I was the same thing. He brought my foot way up here and I looked at it and I felt detached. It mm -hmm. was like I was looking at another foot. Yeah. Now, to take it a step further, imagine being put in that position and then someone jump on you or you have to get out of that position real quick on your own. <laughs> You will tear yeah. your hip injury. You will injure right your knee. You'll yeah. injure yourself. So, and if you you know think about this, right? Imagine somebody's stretching your just your pack. This is an area that most people don't really think about. But imagine bring your arm back as far as you possibly can, or someone bring it back, and then you have to explode out of that position or move. Right? You wouldn't mm -hmm. do it because you know you know instinctively that would tear. That would hurt my. That's the difference well, between flexibility and functional flexibility. This is why a lot of. Uh, you know, like if we go back to our certifications and we look at all the limitations in terms of the degrees of range of motion where they stop you because of safety protocol, it like had to throw all that out because like w that really wasn't preparing a lot of the athletes I was training for success on the field. In fact, it was limiting their abilities substantially in terms of them uh, because when you're actually moving and, and aggressively moving on the field and, and all these different variables and different ways that you're controlling your body, you're in pretty, pretty crazy angles. And you have to be able to know how to navigate and have access uh, to that range of motion in order and be strong in that range of motion in order to thrive as an athlete. Yeah, so. I remember when there were some breakthrough studies that came out that flipped what we thought we knew on its head in regards to warming up. In the 80s and I'd say early to mid 90s, the way you warmed up before a game or before a competition was you did static stretching. 
you would sit in a hamstring stretch and then hold your quad, do a stretch, and then do a hip flexor stretch and do all this static stretching. And this was just standard, you know, in PE class is how we warmed up. And this is what you would see athletes doing before a competition. Then a study came out that showed that static stretching before competition increases risk, increases risk of injury, yeah. reduces performance and increases risk, risk of injury. And you think to yourself, mm -hmm. how is this possible? Like I get looser when I static stretch. How am I hurting myself? Because this is what happens. When you stretch a muscle and you hold a stretch, the muscle isn't becoming looser or longer. You're not, it's not like rubber where rubber's cold and it's not flexible and you warm it up and it gets more elastic. That's not how it works. What it literally is, is your central nervous system keeps a muscle tight. And when you hold a stretch long enough, it sends a signal to the CNS, tells it to relax. And then it kind of loosens its grip on that muscle, allowing it to stretch out uh, further. So static stretching temporarily increases your flexibility and your range of motion by shutting off the CNS a little bit. So now you go off on the extra, on the field and you run and you're kicking or you're jumping and you move in a new range of motion you normally wouldn't because your CNS now has allowed that muscle to elongate a little more, but you have no strength mm -hmm. in that new range of motion. Boom, injuries are more common. So they found like stretching the hamstrings, static mm -hmm. stretching, caused more hamstring pulls than when people did nothing at all. This was compared to nothing at all. Now, of course, there's a superior way to warm up, and that's dynamic and priming, which is turning the CNS yeah. on. There's just a massive difference between passive and active. Yes. Uh, which is where, you know, the active is really where they found the, the most benefit uh, when, when you're approaching a lot of these types of, like, ranges of motion. Can I have access to that? Can I control my body to, to go in and out of these degrees of angles that are a little bit, like, further than, um, you know, these 90 degrees sort of stops? Yes, and also, when you're thinking about everyday life, um, you need, you don't need lots of flexibility. You need functional flexibility. Like the, to be able to get into the splits, it's not really valuable in everyday life, but being able to squat down or rotate, well, let's say your kid spills something in the back of the car and you got to turn real fast, or you're walking and you step off a curb or you lose your footing a little bit and you move in a new range of motion, but you got to control it and have some connection to that. So you don't hurt yourself. That's the important kind of flexibility that you need. Now, the super long ranges of motion, they can come in value. They, they can be valuable for certain sports, but in those sports, you still need, like, for example, if you're a Taekwondo, uh, you know, if you practice Taekwondo, for example, and you need to do these really high kicks, you need that range of motion, but that range of motion is worthless if you can't bring your leg up yourself and you can't right, right. control that range of motion. So, Static stretching does have a place in improving functional flexibility, but it has to be combined with some kind of resistance. But if you compare head to head, you know, traditional flexibility type exercises and programs, and traditional being mostly static stretching, to good full range of motion appropriate resistance training, the functional flexibility from resistance training is superior, will result in less injuries, will make people feel more stable in their everyday lives. It will decrease the the uh, you know pain in everyday life, everyday life more than just improving uh, flexibility. So there's the myth of. By the way, the reason why you see some people who do a lot of resistance training who are very tight, because I know people are watching right now saying, "Well, no, that's true. That's you know part of that is not true." Because I know bodybuilders, and let me tell you, I got I know a guy who can't even wipe his own butt. He's so right. so tight. Part of it is there's muscle gets in the way when you're massive. But here's the other part. When people train in shortened ranges of motion. Yeah, and which a lot of bodybuilders do. That's right. When you do that, you build strength in a short range of motion, which means it's disproportionate to the range of motion that you that you maybe don't own, but that you have. So you essentially make yourself tighter. In other words, if I only do quarter squats and I get really strong with quarter squats, I am going to move very tightly because my body's going to know you get outside that quarter squat position, you have no strength you have no stability. Yeah. So when I say functional flexibility with resistance training, I'm referring to appropriate and full ranges of motion and making that a priority with your training. That's what will give you that functional flexibility. It also build a lot more muscle that way too. That's true. I, you know, and, and you have to, I remember when I, so I used to, I used to be the you know, 90 degree bench press guy. For oh, that's a what long we learn in our service. Yeah. So for a long time, and then I remember uh, reading and, and learning how important it was for me to take these joints through full range of motion and then get into the place where I would do a bench press where I brought like dumbbells all the way down. My side. And initially I was weaker. So initially doing that, I had to pull back. I was able to back then I was doing like 100, 110 pound dumbbells. I had to scale all the way back 
to like 80 pound dumbbells was now my my like my new max but it didn't take long for that to ca catch up and then when i finally got to the place where i was now pressing that same weight that i was pressing before in the shortened range of motion <clears throat> i had more muscle that yes. i had built so there's tremendous value besides like health and protecting your joints there's also those that are paying attention that like all I want to do is build this amazing physique. Well, you'll actually build a better physique if you take the, the your body through its fullest range yeah, of motion. Yeah, there's also. um uh there was a debate uh maybe 20 years ago where they would say, you know, maybe partial reps are more effective. True, you can't get a full range of motion, but because you can load partial reps so much more, that offsets the fact that you're not doing a full range of motion and therefore you should be able to build more muscle. In fact, there was a whole book that was sold on this and it was mm -hmm. about you know, lifting in these quarter, half ranges of motion, but just maxing out the weight and yeah. they tried to sell it. No, studies actually show even when you do that, it doesn't matter. Fuller ranges of motion, uh, if you compare head to head, just build more muscle. Head to head and long term. Because you could you could show a study that shows, you know, somebody who's training in this light full range of motion and you put them in yeah, a small six weeks of that. Yeah, a small six week window where you overload, you know, more than a hundred per hundred and ten percent of what they would normally yeah. be doing through full range of motion. Absolutely. Novelty. The body's gonna to adapt, it's gonna show it's gonna build some muscle. Mm -hmm. So that's how they, they cherry pick stuff like that and to try and uh, you know prove their point. But the truth is over an extended period of time, you know, training through a full range of motion is gonna yeah. benefit you not only health wise, but then also for building muscle. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.